Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to create a histogram and a frequency distribution using six classes. Um, the technique that I'm using in this is the one that my textbook that I currently teach from uses in order to guarantee that all of my students end up with the exact same uh, frequency distribution and histogram because in the real world if you're working with data there's a lot of different interpretations of coming up with a histogram and there's a lot of different outcomes that could possibly happen okay so this is one technique it is not the only technique but it is the one that I currently use so the first thing that I want to do is I want to go through and I want to find my minimum value and my maximum value so my minimum value for this data set is 52 my maximum value is 75. Okay, and then I'm going to use a class width formula. Where I take my maximum value minus my minimum value and I divide it by 6. So I would take 75 minus 52 divided by 6. And when I do this, I end up with approximately 3.83. And with this, no matter what, even if it's a whole number, in order to have the exactly six classes, you do always have to round this up, even if it's a whole number. So we would use a class width of four. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're gonna start with our smallest value of 52, and I'm just gonna add four each time. So my next class would start at 56, add four again, and so my next class would start at 60, 64, 68, and 72. That gives me my lower class limit, and then to get my upper class limit, I would just go one less than the next class. So everything from 52 to 55 would fall here, 56 to 59, the next one would be 63, 67, 71 and then to get the last class you can just use the class width again because that's really all I was doing each time So I would just add four to this one and we would end up with 75 So this is where my classes would um, end and then when I create my histogram I would just use the lower class limits of 52 56 60 64 68 72 and 76 and again, there's a lot of interpretations that people will use on um, creating the histogram, what you're going to go by down here. Okay, I always use lower class limits. Some professors use midpoints, which I'll talk about in a different video. And some use lower class boundaries, which I never use. So it's kind of like there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of different ways of doing a histogram. So what I'm going to do now is instead of going through all of my 24 data points and counting individually where everything falls, I'm going to use my calculator to help me find that frequency. So I'm going to grab my calculator. Normally I would just open a new one. I do already have the data entered in. So I already have the current data put into here. Um, if you would like to, you can pause the video to enter the data in, but you're going to enter it on a spreadsheet screen. So to enter it, what you would do is if you were just starting out, you would just select a spreadsheet screen and then you would go through. I titled my variable as age, so I just typed in the letters A-G-E. And then I simply, just to type it in, all you have to do is like hit the number 62 and enter, and then you type down until you get all 24 values in. Okay, so since I already have the data in, once you have entered all of the data into your calculator, so like I said, if you wanna pause the video, enter the data into your calculator, the order doesn't matter. I always just go down each column. Okay, once you have your data into, entered into your calculator, then just resume watching. So for the next step, after you've entered your data, you're going to hit Control and I, and we're going to insert a data and statistics screen, so option five. Okay, um, it automatically puts all the dots in here just randomly, and I'm going to click down here to add a variable, and I'm going to add the variable age. The default setup is always a dot plot, so it just created a dot plot with all of the points. It individually put a dot for every single one of these values. Okay, um, but we don't want a dot plot, we want a histogram. So I'm gonna to go to menu and plot types, and I'm gonna choose option three, the histogram. Okay, it will automatically set up what they feel is the best 
um, been with or class with. And so they chose to count by twos. I wanna change it so that I can adjust it to fit the data that I have. And so remember, we used a class with the four. So to adjust that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to menu and you're gonna go to plot properties and we're gonna go to histogram properties. So I'm gonna click on histogram properties and I wanna change my bin settings. So the bin width is the same thing as a class width. Okay, and so it's gonna ask you which bin width do you want? So I'm going to use the bin width of four, which is my class width, and I'm going to align it so that it aligns at 52, which was my minimum value. That way it will match the settings that I have in my frequency distribution. Okay, so then I'm just going to hit enter and it will automatically adjust it. Notice now I have one, two, three, four, five, six classes. I can't see the top of this, even though I hover over it, I can see that there's nine. So you can actually grab um, your scale and just pull it down and now it will show the um, top. So I can see from 52 to below 56 and notice they put it in interval notation where it does not include the 56. So it's really like 52 to 55.99. There was one value. There aren't any that fall between 56 and um, below 60. For the interval from 60 where it's included to below 64, there was six, nine, six, and two. So what we would do is just come over here and we would put in our values one, zero, six, nine, six, and two. Okay, so then if you have to create it on paper, you would just put your age of retirement down here to give it context. Okay, over here we would put that this is our frequency, or you could do a relative frequency histogram too and label this as relative frequency. Um, because I'm going up to nine, I'm gonna count by two, so two, four, six, eight, and 10. And then I would just start at 52 and I would go up to where one is and I would put a line and you can fill it in if you want to. You really don't have to if you don't want to. For the next one, we didn't have any. For 60 to up to 64, not including it, I had nine, so I would go up to where nine is and then just draw my bar. My next bar is at, oh, I looked at the wrong thing. Sorry, let me undo that. I went to 64 to 67. Let me look at the right thing and fix that. So I went to six. The next one is nine. So I would just continue on, make sure that they are touching. The only gap you want is if there was a frequency of zero, which we did have. Okay, the next one would again be at six. And then our last one would be at two. Okay, so that's how you would create the histogram on paper from the information that you saw in your calculator and it does match up what we have. Okay, um, if you were to explain the distribution of this one, this one is roughly symmetric. Um, it's pretty much the same on both sides. So for this one, I would say it's roughly symmetric. I do have one other column on here, just in case you have to fill that in, and that is the relative frequency. Um, relative frequency is just your frequency divided by the sum of your frequencies, or you can think about it as frequency divided by the number of values that you have. So since we have 24, um, I could just take each of these individual values and divide it by 24. Um, but I want to show you in the calculator how you can quickly find that relative frequency. So to do that, I'm going to just hit control and back and go back to my spreadsheet screen. And I'm just going to do another one um, where I add my frequency into here. So I do have to add my frequencies into this um, in order to find the relative frequency. And don't hit enter, I tend to do that all the time, just hit the down arrow, it's easier, okay? Unless you have a formula. So one, zero, six, nine, six, and two. And it's really important um, that you name your variables in your calculator because if you don't, then you can't find what you need to. So the next column that we would be working with is our relative frequency. Okay, um, and I shouldn't have put the space in there. That was like out of habit, just typing it in. Okay, so this would be our relative frequency. 
And for this one, what we want this one to be, this equals our variable of frequency divided by, and you can either type in the sum of the frequency or you could just type in the 24. Either one will give you the same thing. And mine is set up to give me decimals. If yours gives you a fraction, you can change that under document and settings. Um, I had changed it as the default. So my document settings, um, my calculation mode, I have it as approximate. Auto will put it as either one or the other. Exact will always put it as a fraction. So um, I do have it set up to approximate just in case yours does um, give you a fraction here. Okay, so then you could put down your relative frequency so you didn't have to individually divide each of those values by 24. So like I said, for this, there are a lot of different interpretations depending upon your textbook. This one just helps you if you are trying to match it up so that everybody in class gets the exact same um, answer. And Otherwise, it's very hard for a computer software program to be able to grade the work if everybody doesn't get the same answer. Okay, so again, ho um, hopefully this helps you. Start with finding the class width. That way that in the calculator you can set it up to match your frequency distribution or your class width or also known as your bin width. And then from there you can get your frequency by looking at the graph in your calculator. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.